Hello everyone, welcome to another informative episode on White Davy Construction and Farm. A question that we often hear from persons who are worm farming for the first time, whether they just got started or they have gotten started for a little while, is how do you know when you can harvest your castings? And how do you store your castings? So I'm just going to give you a quick rundown on how to know when to harvest and how to store the castings. So in this container here, one of my experimental trays, if you look at the material, you'll see that all of it pretty much look the same right throughout the bin. Now this bin, it has a bit more material that the worms can eat, but this bin can be harvested. Now, if you have just started your worm bin, it usually takes three to six months to be able to harvest your worms of course that depends on how many worms you got started with how much you are feeding them how much castings are you looking to harvest and um, what conditions the worms are exposed to because it also depends on what time of year you start your worm bin. So for example, if you start your worm bin in the summer, even if they are indoors in warm condition, their rate of production might be slower than in the summer. And so it might take up to six months for you to be able to harvest. Whereas if you start in the summer, whether the worms are indoors or outdoors, it can take three or so up to six months to be able to harvest. So a lot of things affect how soon you can harvest, but in general, three to six months, you should be able to harvest. Now, there can, it can be challenging knowing when your material is ready for harvesting because Naturally, if you're feeding things like food scraps, then you can see the difference between what food scraps look like and you can see the difference in what worm casting look like because the two don't look the same. If, however, you are someone like me who feed your worm finish compost, then it can be a bit tricky to know when that compost has been converted into worm castings and so the good thing is that although they are the same color the particles of finished compost has a different shape from the particles of the worm castings because the particles of worm castings tend to look like a tiny little ball or a little oval shape it's not flat like the finished compost and it is not as refined and even the way the material feels to your hand is different the material the worm casting tends to have a fluffier feel than the finished compost this is a piece of cabbage just gonna bury it here I'm going to be harvesting this bin soon now after the first three months or the first six months any time within that period of time when you have done your first harvest then you should be able to harvest castings at least once every month so once you get that initial long waiting period of three to six months over then on a monthly basis you should be able to harvest 
Now, of course, if you have a lot of worm and you're feeding them a small amount of food, then it is going to take the worms a short period of time to have that material composted or turned into castings. If you have a small amount of worms and you're giving them a large amount of food, then it will take time for them to go through all that food, but you will end up with more castings in the end. Mm -hmm. Now, when how you feed your bin can make harvesting your casting easier or harder. And, well, I shouldn't say easier or harder. It just um, more time-consuming than would be the right word to use. Say, for example, you've just started this bin. So here is a bin and you just started it. You've had your bedding and you've had your worms in there. And the material come up to a certain distance. And then the worms eat what is there. And then you had another layer. And the worms eat that layer. And then you had another layer and the worms eat that layer. So you're spreading it all across the bin. Now what is happening is that finished compost is going to be on the bottom of your bin. And each time you put the food on the surface, the worms are gradually moving upwards. Over a period of time, there shouldn't be any worms in the lower section. So what is going to happen now when you're ready to harvest it, you're going to take off the upper section that has the worms and the food scraps that it was fed. So when you take off that layer that has the worms and the food scraps and all that is left in the bottom there is finished compost, you may or may not choose to sift it and that depends on how you're going to use it and how you prefer it, whether you want it refined or not or whether you're going to sell it, yes or no. Another thing is when you're feeding the bin, you can feed to one side. So you start feeding over here and the worms are going to be wherever the food, the fresh food is. And so you're going to start feeding one side and gradually you had more. So the worms eat what is here and then the worms move over and you put more food here. The worms move over. They eat what is here. You had more food out here. The worms eat what is here. <laughs> So this is called horizontal migration. So now that the worms have moved over, you have to allow some period of time, like two to three weeks, even up to a month. I like to leave a month if I'm using horizontal migration. That way most of the worms would have moved over. Now you're able to harvest what is here. This middle section here that was fed a second, I wouldn't touch that part yet because you're still going to have a couple worms in here, but this part should be practically free of worms maybe just one or few worms might be in there because naturally there's going to be some amount of organic material that they're going to be feeding on and then so this area I wouldn't harvest yet neither this one just that first portion that you fed now how do you store your castings worm castings can be stored outdoors if it is warm if it is cold worm castings must not be frozen it must not allow to freeze because once you freeze it you kill the microbes that are in the casting which is the most beneficial part of your castings so you don't want to freeze it so it has to be stored indoors now microbes are living organism which means that they are going to require some amount of airflow so when you are after you have harvested your castings you don't want to put it into an airtight container you must have some amount of airflow going through it it does not have to be a lot of airflow but you want to make sure that you have some amount of air that is able to pass through the material you also want to have a little bit of moisture on it because you want to keep those microbes growing so a little bit of moisture you don't have to add a lot to it just just 
barely damp is good enough so it doesn't have to be something that is soaking wet and then you're going to make sure that over the winter you find somewhere that is nice and warm and you store your worm castings there now worm castings when you're storing it you can only store it for up to three years after the third year it has lost most of its nutrients and as such you want to use it as quickly as possible so if you're gonna have a lot of castings that you are going to be storing the recommendation is that you label the ones that you harvest first put the date when you harvest it and use that one first and always keep checking the date when you use it check what you have in storage to see when it was harvested that way you don't end up with castings that is just gonna go to waste now what happens if your castings has expired does that mean that it cannot be used it is of no good anymore not necessarily it can still be added to your garden but it won't supply the nutrients that your plants need but at least it is still an organic material which means that it is going to be amending your soil so it won't have the nutrients but at least it will help to amend your soil to an extent okay so that is how you know when to harvest your casting remember it takes three to six months after the initial setup of the bin to be able to harvest your castings we also learned that every month after the first harvest you should be able to harvest castings unless something is wrong in your bin so your worms are not producing enough we also learned now how to store your castings so one you want the container that you're storing your casting in to be able to allow airflow it needs to have a bit of moisture and you cannot freeze the castings so that's it guys did you find this information to be informative would you like to see more videos like these if so why not take a moment to subscribe to my channel turn on your notification so that you can know whenever I put out a new video during the summer months and possibly falls i do a video per day occasionally there might be a day that i miss for the week but in general i upload daily and don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you like the information that i'm presenting and also you can leave a comment in the section below you can contact me either by leaving a comment in the section below or by email. Thank you for watching and I hope you have yourself a wonderful day.